Hi everyone, it's Cookie Lou in Arizona. You'll have to excuse my appearance. I just came back from the walking pool to try to get a little exercise in before I um, head off to Florida early tomorrow morning to see my mom for her 90th birthday. So um, I'm going to take a moment here to make a brief video. Um, I was trying to do something yesterday. Uh, I did find a little update <clears throat> regarding the FDA and their, um, their opinions on uh, the um, chemical that I've been talking about recently called bisphenol A, BPA. And apparently there is something that has, has uh, happened with the FDA with that. And I wanted to give you a brief update. There was a woman by the name of Patricia Hunt who was a um, genesis in a uh, Washington State University School for Molecular Biosciences who wrote an article. She's been studying chemicals such as BPA for quite a while. And I I made an audio recording that I was going to try to somehow incorporate in a video and it's not working very, very well so I'm going to just play my audio which is me you know explaining about the article and uh, also you will see um, you will hear a little excerpt from uh, Patricia as she explains her thoughts on BPA so I'm going to just I'm going to just eat a little lunch here <laughs> While you listen to this recording, and let's see how it uh, how it works out. So here we go. Hello, everyone. This is Cookie Lou in Arizona. I'm coming to you today with a little bit of an update regarding the FDA putting a ban on the spinel A. Um, Apparently, in Pullman, Washington, uh, it was noted in this article, which was written by Patricia Hunt, who was a geneticist in the Washington State University School of Molecular Biosciences. And um, she is saying that the Food and Drug Administration this week announced that baby bottles and children's drinking cups can no longer contain bisphenol A which is an estrogen-mimicking chemical used in some plastic bottles and food packaging. The move mirrors actions taken by several states, including Washington, to ban this chemical from children's food containers and drinking cups. So it's pertaining just to children. And um, she is saying that this action really is not enough, and this is why. Patricia Hunt. When we go for that BPA-free bottle, we're not always going to get something that's completely free of this chemical because the manufacturers, in fact, can tweak this molecule a little bit. Now, technically, it's BPA, not BPA, it's BPS, maybe. Um, and so it's a similar molecule that can have just as bad of bad activities on the body. So BPA-free doesn't necessarily mean safe, and that's kind of scary. Yes, it is kind of scary. And Patricia continues on to say in the article that the ban doesn't really accomplish much since most of the industry has already voluntarily moved away from BPA. Instead, she fears that this ban might give consumers a false sense of protection because it doesn't apply to a number of similar... because this ban does not um, uh, uh, comply to a number of similar chemicals, including a related chemical called BPA-F, which might be just as harmful. Um, Patricia Hunt helped to raise uh, concerns about the, uh, the chemical BPA when her research uncovered genetic abnormalities in mice that might have been accidentally exposed to the chemical. In 1998, Hunt discovered an accidental release of the chemical into the water bottles of mice, which cause abnormalities in their eggs. Hunt believes that there is a good evidence that even low doses, uh, a low dose exposure of BPA can cause significant changes in the developing fetus. Adding, there is a good evidence that these changes can lead to behavioral, behavioral changes, de uh, decreased fertility, and the increase in diseases like breast cancer and pros prostate cancer. Hunt also believes that BPA is the first of a series of similar chemicals that need stricter controls. BPA is like a poster child for this 
class of chemicals that are in, uh, in, in uh, endocrine disruptors, endocrine disruptors, uh, which affects our home, a hormone structure, apparently. Uh, and that can interfere with our body's hormones, she said. It is particularly harmful to the unborn and the newborn child. Hunt works at uh, the Washington State, State School of Molecular Biosciences and is working in a series of publications relative to EPA that are expected to be released in a few months. If you want to contact Patricia at her school, there's a number here I can give you. It's 509-335-4954. And her email is pathunt at wsu.edu. So if you want to uh, contact Pat for whatever reason, there is a little information about that. So this for reason there is a little information about that. So this is quite depressing, my friends. Uh, apparently, these corporations that are making billions of dollars with their plastics uh, aren't going to quit. They're going to, you know, if we ban something that they're doing, they're going to just, like she said, they're going to restructure a molecule to get the same effect, just a little bit of different structure. And it's still going to be just as harmful. So apparently, it's evident to me that they're out to get us. They're not going to quit until we're all sick and dead. <laughs> and it's, uh, it, it, it's I, I don't know what's left to do. I trust nothing anymore, my friends. And, um, you know, I mean, my, uh, my blender bottle's going in, in the trash because apparently that label that says BPA-free cannot be trusted. And I will be making my drinks and my protein drinks and, and, and anything else that I drink is going to be coming out of a glass bottle. I'm going to eliminate as much plastic from my life as possible. I'm going to watch every can I open, and if it's coating, it's going in the No, it's not going in the garbage. It's going back to the store with a complaint that I will not have food in my system that is Go get them, tainted with chemicals from the lining of the can. You know, it's plain and simple. If we don't want dangerous things in our biosphere, we just don't create it. We don't need all these chemicals that are causing such havoc in, in the world today. I mean, it is, just, it is just destroying every nook and cranny of the planet, the sea, the animals, the human beings and the children that are consuming or touching anything that's made out of plastic is so harmful. And the government is just not fighting for our rights regarding this because there is no government anymore. There is just big corporate control. And um, there's nothing we can do to change these corporations' minds about what they're doing that's harmful to the world. So the only thing we can do is we can protect ourselves by watching everything that we do touch, breathe, and consume in the way of food or drink. We really have to be careful. You know, a lot of people say, well, you know, it can't be that bad for us because, uh, you know, we're living longer. You know, we've got pharmaceutical companies <clears throat> just giving us so many pills to keep us living longer. So what are we worried about? Well, we might be living longer, but we're not living healthy. I mean, there are people that are starting to have diseases that, which require medication, hospitalization, surgeries, and such. You know, in their, in their 30s and 40s. I mean, we have children that are getting breast cancer. We have men that are getting breast cancer. We have a lot of uh, diseases and carcinogenics that are affecting our bodies. So we're living longer, but are we healthy? Are we happy? I don't think so. So um, there's just so much that we don't know. There's so much that is secretly, secretly kept from us. You know, they don't, they don't label anything in the in the the bottles they don't let people know that perfumes is a phthalate that is a chemical that's harmful to us we don't know that unless we study chemicals or we go to some of these uh, websites that have um, people who work in this industry to that can explain that this is harmful and what it is and what it really does so we're at the mercy of um, of um, Corporations that make chemicals that are harmful were at the mercy of a government who doesn't step forth to help us stay safe and healthy. So, um, you know, it's kind of like living in New Orleans during Katrina. You just kind of sit there drowning 
<clears throat> in all this shit and nobody comes to help. Nobody's going to come. We're on our own. Just like they were in New Orleans. So totally on their own. And uh, we have to do the best we can for ourselves and for our family. So on that negative note, my friends, I will say goodbye. God bless. And uh, live long and healthy. Bye. Well, that's what I recorded yesterday, and I couldn't get that to incorporate that with the video, so I just thought I would try it this way. <clears throat> Let it play while I was making a new new video movie. That's pretty much, you know, the, the scope of things. Um, it's, um, I, I did see, uh, a, a hear a lot of this information that was discussed in uh, her article about restructuring and tweaking chemicals to continue doing what they're doing uh, and just put a different name on it. In that movie, um, Plastic Planet, it's very informative. Again, I'm going to say go out and get that movie, Plastic Planet, and watch it. It really describes what they're doing uh, chemically, how they're making these. and uh, They bring you to factories and they bring you to scientists and professors and colleges that are uh, studying these uh, issues and people like Patricia who's been working uh, with uh, uh, in the bioscience field her, her whole life that uh, I mean these are the people that are telling the truth not the people that are making the, the plastics they're the ones that I that I would not believe uh, when they say something is safe you know darn well it's not when these people say there's a concern here there's evidence here children are getting sick you know diseases are forming and uh, there's damages that are happening to the body when these are constantly consumed. In various various ways of living, we were consuming chemicals and toxins from every uh, from the minute we open our eyes in the morning until the minute we open them again the next day. So it's just a matter of uh, you know watching our own backs and doing what the, what is best for ourselves and our family. Number one is you have to know about these things. You have to know that these things uh, exist and that this stuff is happening. And uh, it's been happening for a long time. I mean, this is not new, new things. This is not new stuff, people. This has been around for a long time. Like, you know, like she's been talking about this since 1998. It's going on before that. So when Patricia, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> who uh, is a scientist, uh, in the nature that she uh, that she's that she works in the industry, I just feel it's um, I'll believe her over over Dow Chemical any day. So anyway, um, I was enjoying um, some uh, lower fat yogurt with uh, cranberries and uh, flaxseed, ground flaxseed, and it's oh, it's so good. And I got the idea while I was eating it, it was reminding me so much of ice cream. I think I'm going to freeze it and see what happens. <laughs> I can get a little ice cream made from, uh, from my uh, Stony Field Organic Yogurt. That is the best yogurt that you can buy because it is provenly, truly organic. And it has the seal USDA Organic on the container. Unfortunately, the container is plastic, but, you know. I'd rather have a good healthy food in plastic than a crappy food in plastic. So, But I take it out and put it in my own little cups anyway. So guys, that's about it. That's a little update from FDA. Uh, they have uh, you know, <laughs> they have banned uh, P uh, BPA in children's containers and drinking cups and such. But what makes them think that children don't eat canned corn or green beans that come in their uh, plastic coated liners in their cans. I mean, so you take it out of the, out of the children's food containers, but you, you leave it in the containers that the children are going to consume in the, in the, as a food source. So I don't know what to say about that. It's kind of upsetting. Needless to say, I'm going to say goodbye because this is, uh, I got so much to do. I got to dye my hair. You wouldn't believe what's under this wig and I got to pack. So See you later, alligator, when I come back from Florida. I'm going to bring everybody a coconut. Okay, bye-bye. Love you. Be well.